What's up guys? Welcome back to the Gripper series. Today we're going to be talking about programming for grippers and how to how to structure your workouts and do other aspects of grip as well for the training because that is important. So I guess we should start out first with there are a lot of ways that people train grippers in uh, in the community. I would say though, a lot of people don't really train it optimally. And there's a lot of guys that are kind of missing strength gains that they could be getting. And a lot of people are plateauing or stagnating. And, you know, it. I don't really like to see that. I want to see everybody, you know, bust through that plateau and be the best that they can be. So I'm going to set aside a lot of that stuff here and I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a better alternative to training. So one of the ways that people train grippers, and this is really common, uh, they basically, they just take the gripper that they can't close or that they can close for one or maybe two reps and they just do like a really heavy one rep max or an attempt or a negative or a hold stuff like that and a lot of that stuff doesn't really do anything for you like if you think about it you would never do that for bench pressing or deadlifting like if someone told you let's one let's max out on our bench every every week uh so that you can get stronger it's like mm, I'm not sure if that's the best idea. Um, do I? There are ways of approaching your one rep max, but I'll get into that later. But in general, for grip, if you're not doing volume, you know, if you're not incorporating volume into your uh, sessions, it's not really going to get you much stronger. So trying to trying to attempt a uh, a gripper that you can barely close or whatever it's not really going to help you that much but what will help you is backing off to a lighter gripper you know something if we're talking about intensity so something like 70 75 percent of your one rep max and just sticking around in that area for a little while like you can do it for a month you can do it for two months three months you can do it for however much you want um, and you know, we can, we can use a couple of examples. Let's say you want to close a number three, right? And let's say that number three is at like 150 RGC. And let's say we're trying to get to 75, 70% uh, of that. And let's say that's like, um, 130 ish, 125, something like that. And we should think how many times we have to do that to close a 150 RGC number three. And let's let's just say that it's six times, eight times, whatever. If you got that to 10 reps, you are gonna get stronger. Uh, and you will be able to close that number three that you keep missing. But if you keep trying to close the number three, you're not really closing anything. So the muscles in your forearm especially the flexor is has to be stressed somewhat and if you're not stressing it through the volume and you're constantly trying to you know max out and everything like that it doesn't really do much and a lot of guys just don't understand that or they just don't want to believe it but or maybe that's just what they were told that it works but it doesn't really work and a lot of times people can get injured from it as well, which is why would you want that? But if you take that six rep max that you just did and you increase it to 10, that's four extra reps on a gripper that you could only close six times. So you think about how beneficial that is for the muscles in your forearm and the tendon and everything like that, how much stronger you really got after doing four extra reps on that same gripper. Now, I'm not talking about newbie gains because some guys in the beginning, they start training reps and they never did reps before. And 
they will think, oh my God, I got from uh, two reps to three reps to four reps to five reps, six reps. I just gained four reps. I'm gonna try my one rep max. And suddenly they, they're at the same level. It's like, yeah, you didn't give yourself enough time. We're not talking about two weeks here. I'm talking about training this uh, consistently for three months, six months, a year, two years, indefinitely, you know? Only three, maybe four times a year should you really be trying to max out on grippers or peak. And the reason for that is because there's only, if you notice a lot of times for most people, after they've been doing grippers for a while, there's only three or four times a year where they might feel really strong or they might hit a PR or something like that. Normally people don't hit PRs every time they do grippers, unless they're just really new. So keep that in mind. And also if you're a teenager and you're training, this will really help because it will get you a good habit to get into for when you get a little bit older that once you gone through those uh, really fast uh, gains, that you'll realize, oh shit, I really need to start training properly to get through this plateau that I'm at. And that's what I want you guys to learn is just for grippers, it's just not different from how you would train for bench press or how you would train for deadlifting or squatting or anything like that, you know. You need to make sure that you train optimally and you incorporate plenty of volume and you don't want to overdo it, but you also don't want to leave any out. You know, there's a given amount of work that you can do for a given day before it doesn't really help anymore. And that's what you have to find a balance. You have to find a balance point between that. Now, in terms of training other aspects of grip. So if you train, if you want to train pinch, if you want to train dick bar and grippers, there are ways to do it. Now I would suggest that you do grippers and pinch on the same day. If you want to do that, uh, if you want to do all three, I would suggest you do the pinch on the same day as grippers, not the dick bar, because the dick bar and the grippers both use this form flexor muscle right here. Once you're done with grippers, you're going to be too pumped up to really do much on your thick bar and you're kind of going to be overworking that muscle and that can lead to uh, medial elbow pain usually because they're all pulling in that same spot. But the pinch doesn't really tax that muscle as much. It taxes more the muscle that run along the radial side and because of your thumb and your, uh, your four fingers are working together to do a pinch motion and it's more isometric. So uh, you can either do pinch before grippers or you can do them after. Um, I haven't found as much of a difference to be honest in either, but I still do grippers first and then pinch after. Now, how many times a week should you do it? Uh, I do it once. I suggest a lot of people do it once or twice a week but I still think once a week for grippers is really good for anybody who's over that three mark. Once you get past the three mark, it starts getting harder and harder to really do grippers multiple times a week at the same intensity because you need, you need time to rest, right? We all know that we need time to rest and we need to make sure that we're feeling good. You don't want to overtrain. But if you're under a number three and you're around the two or one and a half or a one or two, uh, or two and a half, it's probably better to do a little bit of a greasing the groove where you kind of almost, uh, you're, you're doing a lot more volume and you're kind of just closing the gripper. Sorry about that. There's a lot of guys that when they first start grippers, they notice that they can just, you know, you know that one right here. They just notice that they can just start closing it all the time, you know, and they do it on the desk like this or they do it in their car, but it's not the most optimal way if you're trying to get really strong. But I mean, that's what really this video is for. But for those of you who want to get uh, gripper training in and don't really care that much about getting super strong in them, well, 
then just do once a week or twice a week and it, it won't it won't injure you now for the thick bar i would suggest that you guys put at least two days of rest or two days of doing something that's not grip related between your gripper and your pinch and your thick bar workout so for me i have it monday and fridays so i have fridays gripper and pinch and then Monday I'll have the thick bar and wrist curls and a lot of arm wrestling stuff. And by Friday, I'm well rested enough that I can work with the with the grippers and the in the pinch block. So that's a that's a good way to do it. If you do it on a Saturday, you might want to rest, you might want to do the thick bar on a Tuesday, but just in general, at least two days between uh, those two sessions, a good rule of thumb. Now, the sets and reps, I don't have to tell you guys too much about that because it varies from person to person, but you should be working anywhere from the six to 12 rep range. Now, you're not gonna stay at this forever. So once you feel like you've gotten stronger so let's say, if I tell you guys, so let's say I have somebody who closing a two and a half for six reps, and now he got to, he trained for two months, three months, and suddenly he got to 10 reps with the same gripper. Now I can get him on a program, you know, a six week block or something like that, where he just, um, you know, he goes from 10 to eight, to six, to four, to two, to one. So you can go from 70 to 80, uh, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100% of your one rep max in terms of intensity. And that's really the basic way to go about it because that's kind of like a linear block. But sometimes you can get away with closing that one for 10 reps and just taking, you know, 10 days off of grippers or 14 days off. And the next session, you might feel so fresh that you might be able to just close that number three that you're trying to do, right? You know, it's a it's a very simple thing. Sometimes, uh, you know, but I would suggest if you're doing anything over eight reps, you might want to give yourself a little bit of a break or, you know, at least uh, a week of rest before you try to attempt that one. But if you want to go the safer route where you want to guarantee that you close it, you can go along a six, eight week block where you're just, you're kinda, you're, you're cutting down the volume and you're upping the intensity. And that's how you're gonna prime your hand and your body to get ready to exert the most amount of effort to close that, you know, that big PR grip that you're trying to get. And you can kinda do the same thing with pinch or thick bar, cause that's, you know, it's, it's, it's not much different. A lot of the stuff isn't really different fundamentally from training any other strength sport. So keep that in mind, guys. Uh, I'll have another, I'll have multiple videos coming out answering a lot of the questions you guys uh, posted in the post that I made earlier. And yeah, that's um, just leave any comments down below if I missed anything, but I think I got everything covered so far. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Make sure to like and comment and uh, subscribe if you haven't. There's some people watching these videos that aren't subscribed, which is kind of weird, but it's whatever, at least you're watching it. So yeah, take care guys, peace.